If you love talking about cats, but your friends and family are kind of over it, this is the podcast for you. Join your hosts, Danielle Stray Woolley and Elizabeth Calico Gearhart on the Jersey Podcasts, where everyday cat lovers share funny stories, challenging situations, and ask their questions about cats. All right, let's get right into this episode. Hello, everybody. I am Danielle Woolley. And I'm Elizabeth Gerhardt, and we are the Jersey Podcats. Now, we used to try to do it at the same time, <laughs> and it was like kind of cute. And then by like episode 10, I'm like, Elizabeth, can you just say it? I'm, I can't do it. I can't get it down. <laughs> so, Danielle, I love those new glasses. <gasps> Thank you. I got these actually from Christie's company. She was a guest a couple weeks ago. Um, it's called Specs Eyewear Inc. And they donate all of their net pre- proceeds currently to Animal Rescue. So I got to choose the rescue that I wanted this to go to. And it's actually going to Mission Meow which is another cat group, Uh, you know, Sally Williams, we've had her on too. So I just love how this is already like creating so many connections. And I've been having a lot of trouble with my eyes, actually. Um, So I needed something a little bit bigger to help block wind. And when I'm outside for the light sensitivity, um, and all that fun stuff, these actually turn into sunglasses. So I feel super cool. Thank you for noticing. You are super cool, girl. Well done. So, so what other new things have happened in your life since last time we talked? Um, I've been actually going to doctors a lot. I know I shared previously, like I'm feeling okay, um, but just, you know, challenges, ups and downs with having some autoimmune diseases. Sometimes I'm fine. Sometimes I like to throw a little pity party for myself. I'm kind of in the middle right now, <laughs> but um, everything came back looking good. So I'm just keeping on, keeping on. Well, thank heavens. You got to stick yeah. around for a long time because I want to do this podcast for many, many, Forever. many more years. <laughs> Forever. But yeah, I mean, we just had autoimmune disease awareness month, I think was last month. And then they had Sjogren's disease awareness. And then I think rheumatoid arthritis disease awareness. Like you don't know that these things even exist until like they come into your world. So it's well, just interesting to share information and let people know that, hey, if you're going through something, you're not alone. Keep going. Well, it's interesting because per our last guest too, it's like, you never really know what someone's dealing with. So you have to kind of approach them with kindness because yeah. there's like, it sounds like most of us are walking around with some disease or other. <laughs> something. And then actually one of the things, and it's like, we will talk about it in more detail, like when I'm not so peeved about it at the moment, but something I was diagnosed with when I was 15 that I've been trying to treat. Um, I've been seeing a new doctor that ran tests and they're like, you don't have that. I'm like, what do you mean I don't have that for 25 years? That's what they've been saying. That's what some of my issues are. But, you know, it's just, it's, it's fun. It's fun to uh, yeah. learn stuff. Medicine what about you? Is a, medicine's a very inexact science. Well, um, we went down to Washington, D.C. to see my son and his wife. And we it's went probably nice there right now. It was nice. We were just at the tail end of the cherry blossoms. We went down early April. The cherry blossoms mm-hmm. are early this year, but we did see it was it's still pretty down there. I love DC. And I guess um, our guest today, Lori Sates, she's from uh, near DC. So oh yeah, she, she knows what it's like down there. But we um, ended, we wanted to go to the museum. So we went to one of the art museums that has two buildings. And the second building is modern art. We had done the first building a couple of years ago. And it's all the like Renaissance type paintings and stuff, you know, and people. I love art stuff. I keep rotating stuff on the walls behind me. Yeah, actually, I haven't rotated in a while. I'll have to uh, get you guys that mix up next time. Absolutely. And so we went, we're going to go to the other half. So we met my son and his wife and we go into it and it's the modern art. And so they are, my son is just, he's really sarcastic. Sometimes he's funny, sarcastic, like, like your cat, your modern cat art that you have in the YouTube video right now. Yeah. He got me this cat. Yeah. So, so we're looking at these paintings as like, it's just a line. It's a stripe. How is that art? <laughs> then another one is completely red, but he's like these little, little red dots. He's like, okay. And so we didn't stay there that long, but Richard, my husband was totally into it because he loves art too. And I like art too, but, but I mean, my son was just cracking me up, but I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I hope the people around us aren't listening to this. So then we went down to the wharf and that's really been built up and there are, it's, it's very cool down there. It, it, there's shops, there's restaurants there. It's really neat. And I don't remember if I've been down that way. I mean, I know I've been to DC before, but I'm not sure about that area. Yeah. So that's where he proposed to his wife. So they showed us where he Aww. proposed and then, yeah. And then 
we went to this restaurant. We were going to go to this real high rooftop restaurant, really fancy, nice. And then we went to a mid-level one because re- we had to wait for the reservation. And we were out on the rooftop and the wind was so strong. It was, it was blowing like garbage cans across the oh, wow. <laughs> thing. So we're like, okay, we got n- Nature has been weird lately. It's very confused. Yeah, it was like so- 90 last week. I was getting like heat exhaustion, just walking outside for five minutes. And yesterday I was wearing like flannel pajamas because I was freezing. I know, I know. So, so DC was lovely. We really enjoyed it. Uh, that was, that's the most fun thing that we've done recently. And then. Just yeah, I'm just been... realizing you asked me what fun things I did and I went right into doctors, but apparently I had to get that off my chest. So, but I had yeah. fun too. I did some fun stuff at home. We did arts and crafts with the kids. Um, my nieces and nephews, I don't have children of my own, but we did like a scavenger hunt day where we like did like, um, yeah went to a ceramic place and we had a lot of fun so oh that's good that that stuff can be kind of fun sometimes Mm -hmm. because everybody's in a good mood right I mean the whole thing that sets whether something's fun or not for me is the mood that people are in yeah so like I could go to the most exciting fun thing and if I'm with somebody who's in a foul mood it's just not pleasure oh forget it yeah Yeah. we'll be kicked the morning off I, I sent them like little clues of where we were going Um, And my sister brought them to Target and they were like, what are we doing here? And I sent them on a 15 minute timer with a budget to go buy as much pantry items as they could to them. We, after that, we went and brought them to the food pantry, but they were like, that was fun. But if I had just said, Hey, let's go drop off food at the food pantry. They're going to be like, "Ugh, that's boring. So you are so creative girl. I try. That's my outlet. My outlet is doing something fun and creative. That's awesome. Well, do you think we've talked enough about ourselves yet? I think sure. I think so. Have. Okay. So <laughs> we are really excited yes. to have Lori Sates with us today. She sent us this picture of herself in her car with her cat right next to her in the car. And she's telling us that she, she traveled with her cat. So Lori, welcome. Tell us, how was that? Hi, thanks for having me on the show. Yeah. Um, that was the trip of a lifetime for both of us. It really was. I knew she was a good traveler before I went and did this month long road trip with her, but yeah, it was fantastic. I know you can't do that with every cat. No, yeah. She was 19, right? You said yeah, she, was, she was 19. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my cat Max is so used to being in the car, going to the vet. He would do it. My other two cats would like go insane, but where did you go? Yeah. So I, I took, I decided to take a month long road trip and part of uh, that decision of where to go was dependent on where I could go with Panther. So we, <laughs> we started out at a friend's house in Cincinnati because that's where everybody takes summer vacation, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good one. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but Jen had said, sure, come and Panther's welcome. So we started there and then we continued down, stayed with a friend in, uh, in South Carolina for a night and then headed down to South Florida, which is, was my ultimate destination because my dad lives down there. So I wanted to be able to get down there to see him. Nice. You must like to drive. No, I actually don't really <laughs> all that much, but it's it, like, I say that and I've done uh, several trips from Florida up to Virginia and New Jersey and cross country driving from California back to Virginia. Whoa. You know, that's funny because my daughter hated to drive and she wouldn't get her license for the longest time. And then she finally got it. She's a traveling nurse now. And she and her friend took turns driving clear across the country. And now she drives everywhere. We went and visited her. She's in Hawaii and she drove us around the whole time, saved us a fortune on Uber. Nice. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Wow. So tell us, this is a cat podcast, although we always get into other things, right, Danielle? Yeah. (laughs) So tell us about life with your cat. You only have one. Well, yeah. So (laughs) I said trip of a lifetime and that was sort of near the end of Panther's life. So yeah, she, uh, she was only with me for another three weeks after we finished that trip. Mm. But, um, but I had her for the, for 18 years and many, many cat stories. I had a second cat, uh, karma who I had for 11, 11 years. And I don't even want to tell you all this because I don't want to bring you down, but today is a one year anniversary of Karma's Aww. passing. But, but not having Karma actually, I mean, I love her and I miss her, but the, I wouldn't have been able to do this road trip with the cats 
if karma was still alive because karma was not a good traveler. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. She so, would have been like the backseat driver telling you where to turn. Yeah, she was very vocal. <laughs> and I did do that, a couple of those. The, one of the drives from Florida to Virginia with both of them. And then the trip from California back to Virginia was with both of them. And I did that one by myself. And so wow. smuggling them into and out of hotels, karma, you know, <laughs> It's a good thing I didn't, yeah, I had to take her down like the back stairs because she was so loud. Oh my gosh. There was, there was one place I stayed that I don't think you were supposed to have, like it was an animal friendly hotel, but it was really late by the time I got there to the town and I didn't have a reservation anywhere. And I was just like, I got to stay at this first place. My phone was dead. I'm like, I'm staying here. So I had to smuggle them in. And then I'm picturing them you like out. tiptoeing down the stairs. Yeah, like that's the pretty much exactly. With the crate. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much exactly how it was because karma's screaming the whole time, like, <laughs> "Hey, I'm here!" And I'm like, "Shh." That reminds me so much when when we moved from Atlanta to New Jersey. My husband was already up here, and I had my two kids, and they were, I think, seven and eleven. My son was eleven, and two cats taking them on the plane in their cat carriers. And we got to security and this was after nine 11. And yeah. I said, you have to take the cats out of their cat carriers and have, and I'm like, Holy crap. So luckily my, what? yeah. So yes. my son was old and I had drugged them. So they were on gabapentin, Holy but my cow. son was big enough that he could take one of the cats. So yeah, we had to take them out of their carriers. They would put the carriers through them. We were able to put them back. In. Yeah. So when I moved no out, way. my cats would like been on the ceiling within a second. <laughs> The gabapentin helps them some, sometimes, <laughs> depending on the cat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when I moved from Virginia to California in the first place, we, I flew with both of them again by myself. Oh, man. Yeah. And had to take them through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You had to take, take them, them out of the carriers, right? Yeah. So like, yeah. Yeah. So I think we can agree that you are a dedicated cat lover. Uh, to for go sure. through all for of sure. that. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah. are you going to get another cat anytime soon? I don't know about anytime soon. I, yes, because I really miss having them. This is the first time in 30 years that I haven't had at least one cat. So it's, do been you still a, like hear them? Like, yeah. like, like sense them being around a hundred percent. In fact, just the other day I went to, I was leaving my apartment and I like for an instant, I almost said, all right, see you later girls. Like what, what am I doing? Yeah. They come to me in dreams. Yes. I've had yeah. that with my cats too. Frequently. Yes. Yes. I, I, they do stick around. Like I, I know we have checkers. If anybody's ever seen my wall behind me, she's dressed in an admiral's uniform because she ran the household. She, <laughs> <laughs> I'd say, I think I said this before, but we had two cat boxes and she had trained the other cats that one Not cat box it. was for number one and one cat box was for number two. It was <laughs> so funny, but, um, but we have a grave in the backyard and my husband goes out and talks to her still mm -hmm. and, and um yeah she's around so yeah yeah she's a, she's a good cat so so you don't know if you're gonna get another cat why would you not want to because right now I'm doing a bit of traveling for a project I'm working on a business project that I'm involved with and so like I'm leaving tomorrow to go to Los Angeles and Las Vegas and then back to California I'll be gone for almost two weeks yeah. and yeah. It's just not, I, I don't, I don't like, I get anxious about leaving when I know they're going to be left. And right now I don't have a reliable cat sitter around either mm -hmm. where I am. When I lived in California, I would have left them in a heartbeat with that cat sitter, but right. yeah, it's just, it's just not, um, not the best time for, for me to do that because of, because of the traveling. Well, that's a responsible pet owner right there. <laughs> Rather yeah. than saying, I want this cat, it's mine. And then, you know. Right. Yeah, this is what I want. I don't care what the cat feels like. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel the same way about my cats. I don't like leaving them, even though I have a cleaning lady and she's our house sitter. So she comes and lives with them while we're gone, which is really great because they know her, they're used to her, they see her every week. Um, but I still don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just feels weird. Yeah. Like, I'm excited to go, but then I... I just get a little bit anxious about leaving them. 
and you wind up having to make like that long to-do list of making sure you do all the special things that they need and like like when yep. we had William Dorella on we were joking so like you could scroll through my phone and see like the instructions yeah I have a cat a list of cat instructions in my computer like it's a document Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, so Lori, if you, so you see these, we're on Zoom, so you can see this behind me. So this yeah. is from Crown and Pod. My kids got me these. So I have checkers dressed as the Admiral, Lily drinking a cup of tea in a white dress and Cushy as like a little Lord Fauntleroy. <laughs> so, uh -huh. so what would your cats have been if you got these for them? What would you? Oh my gosh. What a good question. I do not know. Um, Panther was very low key. She just was, she was a tabby and she just, whatever, everything's all good all the time. Oh, wow. Karma was black with a little bit of white on her chest and she was a hyper beastie. She was so naughty and I loved her anyway. Like She, she was, was like checkers. She was like my trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Checkers was like that. Checkers, checkers could do no wrong and she did whatever she wanted and- <laughs> What yeah. about you, Danielle? What are your cats going to be? Well, I'm not cat. sure because Loki got his name because he's already mis mischievous. And you can even see, I mean, if you're watching, um, if you zoom in, like you could just see his face just like extra mischievous -y too. Um, and, and they have different personalities at different times of day, I feel like, too. So it depends. So if it's when they're being cute and they want to cuddle, like maybe like a teddy bear. Do they do that? Like, what kind of options are there? Everything. This is too open-ended of a question for me. <laughs> okay. You know how I am about making oh, yeah. decisions. Yeah, you like to have choices. Yeah, <laughs> they have everything. It's pretty cool. I want to do it for Max now that his face is getting cleared up. So, Lori, we started this podcast because I had this cat, Max, as a kitten, and he was scratching all his fur off. Now it's finally grown back. He's starting to look normal, although he's super fat from the steroid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> He's really strange looking, but um, I want to do his face in one of these. But uh, then I feel like I should stick with what their names are because that's why we named them. So Loki and Thor, I would love to see as a Loki and a Thor. Oh, yeah. Um, Derek is named after Zoolander. Yeah, all that. Um, Tony, <laughs> Tony's nickname is Tony Wonder, just because I did a play on words with um, um, what's his name, Ben Stiller characters from different shows because I love Arrested Development. But I'm trying to think. I don't know how that would actually come out. So, well, they have everything, but I, this is the question I want, I've been wanting to ask people too. So I feel like I've noticed that depending on a cat's mood, the texture of their fur changes. Did, have you noticed that? Like if they want to be pet and snuggle, they get really soft. And if they just want to like go outside and hunt, then it gets coarser. Have you noticed that on hmm. your cats at all? I have. I mean, I do know that when Tony gets scared, which is like all the time. Um, yeah. his tail does bush out and he, yeah. you know, he hides, but I haven't noticed actual texture changing. Yeah. I haven't noticed that either. I never Maybe I always that. want to touch them. They could be porcupines and I'm still going to want to pet yeah, them. Same. <laughs> I know. Well, then like the, this is part of being my cat. I get yeah. to pick you up and you have to you love me. Yep. <laughs> yeah. the, then the other thing is with Lily. So her tail comes to a perfect point, like the point on a pencil. I've never seen that on another cat. Have you guys seen that on cats? I have not. No. Yeah. She, she's a beautiful cat, but she's, yeah. You know, all my cats are strays. They all come from all over the country. Actually, <laughs> Lily's from Georgia. Um, Checkers was from New Jersey. Cushy's from New Jersey and Max is from Kentucky. So yeah. <laughs> you know, all of my cats with the exception of one came from a couple blocks around my house. I'm not allowed to go on walks anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, mine have all come from animal rescue organizations. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Well, two of them were foster fails because they were rescued as part of the rescue that I volunteer with. Um, but then I couldn't give them up. So they're mine now, but it's from like three blocks away from me. Yeah. People have asked me if, okay, well, if you're not ready to get a cat, would you foster a cat? I'm like, no, because then it would become my cat. Exactly. <laughs> I did oh my good. God. The first couple I did okay with, but I think because these were like my first true rescues and Derek had an injury and it was like, I was like sleeping on the floor, crying at night while they were like, you know, so it was like way too much of an attachment. Hmm. So Lori, we, Danielle and I did an episode of this where we did cats versus dogs that was fun that was fun so i i don't know if you have any ammunition we can use because we want to do it again we used up a lot of stuff i mean 
Danielle came up with the best thing when she said, wet dog smell. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I that's said, awful. boom, microphone chop. <laughs> that is bad. At the same time, litter box could be. Yes, those tied with each other. But yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So give us some ammunition. Why are cats better than dogs? It, although we all love dogs, right? Like I love all animals. I, I do too. I'm not well, dissing dogs, but cats are better. When it's cold or it's raining outside, you don't have to take them outside for a walk. And you certainly don't have to pick up. At, I get the litter box is different though. The litter box, you have a scoop. It's not like you're taking a bag and putting your hand on. I know. <laughs> Ugh. No, thank you. Yeah. Um, also dog breath. Oh. <laughs> so my cat has pretty gnarly breath. Sorry. Yeah. I brought him to the vet for it and I just give him treats that are supposed to help. <laughs> But he's yeah. got gnarly breath. Isn't Derek. that usually because they have like gum disease or something? They checked. They said that he didn't have anything crazy going on. They said huh. to just keep an eye on it. I tried buying toothpaste and to like cat toothpaste and toothbrush. Yeah. He wants nothing to do with it. Of course. So, but we get him, I call it his, his bad breath bites. I know his butt breath bites. Are his <laughs> <treats>. <laughs> butt breath. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, what else? I mean, dogs, a cat, you can't leave a dog like all day. They have right. to go out. You could leave a cat. You could leave in tech. You could leave a cat overnight. I wouldn't go more than maybe one night, but you don't have to like rush home because you have to let the cat out. Right. Like if you get stuck in New York, because we go into New York a lot, you get stuck in New York and it's like, okay, no big deal. We'll be home in the morning. If we have to get a hotel or something, yeah. cats will be fine. Right. 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 If it was a dog. You'd have to get home. Right. Right. Like we, we were in New York a few weeks. No, I was going to say, are you going to talk about the brunch? The brunch? brunch where you guys wound up staying in New York? The best oh, brunch that ever. Brunch. That was a while ago. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, we I just like brunch. So I always remember brunch. Mm, brunch yeah, we had a good. champagne brunch. That was really fun. But, but we were there a few weeks ago. Like we were there a couple months ago. I was there and the city was normal. If you've ever been to New York, like it's normal amount of traffic and everything. Then like, I don't know, we went a couple weeks later and it's been like this ever since bumper to bumper traffic. Now I think it might be mm. calming down again. We tried to take an Uber home. We had to get out of the Uber and take the subway and take the train home because the Uber wasn't moving. It oh, was wow. Just, yeah. So, I mean, I mean, it's a good sign. Everyone's getting back outside and doing stuff again. They really to, to are. put the positive on. Yeah. But if we hadn't been able to get the train, cause sometimes the trains don't run. If you've ever lived in this area, you know that then, um, it, we would have had to get a hotel and it would have been okay. Cause the cats, you know, we're fine. So yeah, I, I think that's a big one actually, Lori, we didn't, and we didn't really hit on that one, Danielle. So we'll have mm -mm. that for next time. Yeah. We'll give yeah. you credit. Don't worry. I'll write that one down. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> write that one down and give Lori credit. <laughs> yeah. Any other tips? Have you ever had a dog, Lori? We had a dog when I was, I think I was five. We had her for a few years, a German Shepherd. And I love all animals. I, I really do too. Do. I know. I feel like I say that all the time. Like I have to do the disclaimer. I love everything. Yes. Yeah. I love all animals. I just prefer living with cats. Yeah. Me too. So I, Danielle, what do you think about talking a little bit about fine as a four letter word? Oh, I really hope we do. Yes. I actually have uh, your website up right now. Yeah. Okay. So I think you should tell everybody what it says as soon as you open it <laughs> <laughs> or we don't tell them and that makes them have to go to it. Do you have an explicit rating on this show? <laughs> so actually it has to be friendly. So we'll do the short version. Okay. Yeah, so thank you for asking. I, asked. I didn't even think to say that. Yeah. Uh -huh. but we were talking before and we should have been recording it. I didn't really know. So Lori's podcast is called fine as a four letter word. And I'm like, what does she really mean by that? And then I went on her website and I listened to her podcast and especially with the intro, I understand. And now I know what she's talking about. So, and I have to agree. So Lori, I'm fine. Are mean? you, are you really? <laughs> but I started no. the podcast. I started the podcast because I wanted, I, I was looking to be able to share stories from people of a time in their life when they said everything was fine, but it was really not fine at all. You know, and typically that's when somebody says everything's fine. They're saying it because one, they don't want to burden you with all of the issues that are going on for them. So they're just, eh, it's fine. Or they don't even want to admit to themselves that things are not fine. So if they just say everything's fine, 
it'll just keep everything under control. Dumpster fire going on behind me, but nothing to see here. It's good. I got it. It's under control. <laughs> Is there ever a point when your life isn't a dumpster fire? Because I feel like there's mm-hmm. always little dumpster fires in my life. No. See, then you might need my staying calm and chaos program. <laughs> I <I've had> but- <laughs> life is very chaotic and we just keep adding to it like my husband he's like he just wants to keep doing new and adding more and more and more and I'm like you know we're kind of getting close to retirement age we're not there yet but we're closer to retirement age than we were to be in a teenager like how much more do you want to <laughs> add and it's like whatever I can do <laughs> so yeah um I, yeah it's just it I think there are, there are a lot of people. I don't feel like my life is in chaos. You don't? No. Wow. I should do your program. (laughs) I seriously, I am. People come to me. They're like, I'm always the calm and grounded one. That's why I started teaching this stuff, but I wasn't, I wasn't always, I have been in more recent years because I've learned those tools and techniques. Do you take private clients then to work with? I will, but I actually prefer to do group programs because I think everybody gets more out of it. The energy, and, yeah. Yeah, the energy and the synergy and the the sharing that happens in a group program is unmatched in a one-to-one program. So is it on Zoom? Yeah, yeah, I, I've done them on Zoom. I'm not running one currently, but uh, I have run these group programs. I do small groups. So it's not like you're in a group with a hundred people. Typically it's, uh, five, eight, 10 people like a mastermind then. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I run this, uh, I've run it as an eight week program. And, um, to what Danielle was talking about, the program is called F being fine. You can fill in the blank. (laughs) And (laughs) that's why I pulled up the site. I was like, Oh, hello there. (laughs) (laughs) Tell me how you really feel. (laughs) Yeah. Well, because you reach a point where you're, you're not okay with everything just being fine any yeah. longer. Like right. life is about so much more than that. Mm-hmm. And so how do you move from that place of, all right, because a lot of people look at their life and everything is is fine. Like they feel like they have no, no uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like no right to complain. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. And you know what, now that you're saying that, I feel like I kind of put out a little bit of that when I was given my update. I'm just like, ah, it's okay. You know, I'm going yeah. through XYZ, but it's fine. I probably said fine. I don't even remember. Yeah. You have like yeah. a buzz. Like that's part of your group. <laughs> Everyone gets a buzzer. Every time they say that they're fine. You know what? Great idea. They should get a like a wristband that's like rubber band. And every time you say fine, you just snap it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you go. You're welcome. Oh, uh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> New, new addition to the program, but, uh, yeah. So it, the point though, is that life can be so much better than fine when you allow yourself to, to find the things that bring you joy. So what this makes me think of is, of course, I love to eat. Mm. <laughs> Why would you eat vanilla ice cream when you can have chocolate? <laughs> I I never eat vanilla. I always eat chocolate. So so that's funny because it depends. Because again, I don't like to have a favorite anything. It depends on my mood and what the options are. But when I do pick vanilla, it's usually because I want to have certain toppings with it. Like maybe I want mm-hmm. some like peanut butter or Great. hot fudge. And then the chocolate on its own is already nice and rich. So I like to do it as my base. Yeah, it's like a clean slate. Well, I feel like if they didn't have chocolate and they were going to give me vanilla and that was my only choice, I would say, like, okay, that's whatever. fine. That's fine. <laughs> I'll take the vanilla. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, if there's options, I'm going for mint chocolate chip, but I mean. Yes. Yes. Mint chocolate chip or the Ben and Jerry's has that mint, um, mint cookie. Ooh, that sounds good. Ooh. Yeah. That's, that's a good one. That does sound really good. Yeah. I can I- tell I didn't have lunch yet. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> Or if you want to talk ice cream, when I was out in Cincinnati on this road trip with Panther, my friend Jen introduced me to Graters. I don't know what that is. G-R-A-E-T-E-R-S. It's a family-owned business in the Cincinnati area. They have, uh, it's ice cream. And they have shops in, I think, like some of the surrounding states, maybe like Kentucky and maybe. I'm Googling it right now. 
Oh, it is so good. And you can get it in some grocery stores. Like there's some grocery stores around here that carry it. And it looks like you can actually buy on their website too. Yes, Ooh. you can, but you know, then they're going to have to ship it to you in a uh, million dollars. Uh, hey, if it's as right. good as you say it is, it is. And I don't have to leave my house. Just well, kidding. you can probably get it at, at one of the stores. Like I'm thinking ShopRite might have it because they're oh. part of that. Hmm. Who is ShopRite owned by Kroger? I think um, so. I don't know. I think it might be. I, yeah. So I think they might have it. Anyway, you yeah. can check on their website and see what stores carry it. Cool. So, yeah. So while we're talking about ice cream, okay. <laughs> I want to ask this. We did say about, we were going to talk about some random stuff. Yeah. I want to ask this question about ice cream and cats specifically. Yeah. Do you let your cat lick your ice cream bowl when you're almost done? Yes. Yes. Danielle? Um, I don't think so. Cause I think the ones that like, cause not everybody likes all human food in my house. The cats, they, I just let them eat it while they're doing it. My husband thinks it's disgusting, but they oh. just kind of take it as they want it. Yeah. Yeah. So my husband, we, I can't even wash the cat food dishes in our main dishwasher. He oh, really? Cat food and yeah. We do have cat- a separate sponge for all the cat food stuff. We have two different sponges we use. <laughs> yeah. He thinks our germs are too gross, but I mean, after watching him eat a chipmunk in the backyard or on the porch, then yeah, I can kind of see. <laughs> oh, see for me, I don't care oh, wow. about the germs. I care about the stinky food smell of the cat food on my food sponge. Yeah, cat food stinks. What cat food really stinks? I have just always mixed everything together and not thought about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a normal way to do it. Like, <laughs> now, <laughs> do I use them separate all the time? No, but it's good in theory. And actually, my friend sent me a link that I got. The sponge is actually shaped like a cat. It's got like a scrubby on one side and it's got yeah. like holes in the middle. So you can put your finger and go like that yeah. instead of doing this. Yeah. yeah. So whoever's watching online, you'll have to watch now to see the well, weird hand motions I just made. Well, now, and he wants me, he can't stand the smell of cat food so bad. He wants me to get a separate little like diaper genie kind of thing to put the cat food um, pouches. I buy him in pouches to put the empty pouches in and the cans in so he won't have to smell it in the garbage. Wow. Like, just take the garbage down. It's his job to take the garbage down. I'm like, just take the garbage down more often. That That's would be funny. incentive. <laughs> Yeah, my um, my friend actually was like, "Why don't you have a garbage disposal? Because the cat food smells so bad, and then you have to scoop it out of the sink when you're done cleaning." Again, a lot of random topics, but these are the pains of our cat lives, having to deal with stinky cat food when we're doing dishes. <laughs> I had if a that's cat. the only problem I have. I'm good. <laughs> One of my past cats. When you talk about ice cream, we used to call her Carbo Kitty because she loved ice cream, graham crackers, peanut butter. I mean, peanut butter is not carbs, but uh. Yeah, she donuts. I mean, it's not like I would feed her this stuff a lot, but if I let her taste it, she loved all the carbs. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, I've had it back in my grad school days. We had these friends of were sitting on the floor eating pizza, and this guy goes to me, Oh my gosh, I don't believe this. Your cat just came and pulled my pizza crust off my plate and started eating it. Yeah. And here's something I never told anybody because we had roommates. We did, I think it was Thanksgiving or Easter or something. We did this big feast. We had all this food and we had it on the kitchen table and we all went to the living room, which was, <laughs> you know where I'm going with this, right? <laughs> and I see my cat and he's walking through tasting every single Oh time. no. <laughs> but I never told anybody. <laughs> okay. You know what? I probably would have done the same thing. Oh my gosh. It reminds me of, I think it's online. I've seen like, well, obviously it was online, um, like on Facebook or something where they were like, this is why I won't eat food from people's houses with pets. And you just see like the cats, like laying in the bowl. It's butt like sitting on the stove. It's like, yeah, I had a cat jump on a pizza once. (laughs) The box was open. He jumped right into the pizza. Still ate it anyway. It's like, and my sister-in-law says cat fur is seasoning. (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Now we're getting uh, gross. Like I'm yeah. not going to eat lunch now. <laughs> yeah. Is it pan- the inch- like Panther and Karma would never, they never went on the kitchen counters. Like I didn't have to teach them. They just didn't do that. Yeah. We amazing. have like a separate side that it's like counters we don't really use. So I'm like, whatever, I don't care. Cause that's also where I give Thor his medicine. It's like part of his routine. He knows to jump up and it's mm-hmm. easier than me trying to chase mm-hmm. him around with it. Um, but other than that, they don't go like where the food food is. Yeah. Thank goodness. Cause I, there's no way I'd be able to control it with how many I have. 
Yeah, well, we don't really cook. I mean, oh, Richard did the greatest thing last weekend. He, we bought a bunch of chicken and hamburger and he grilled everything with like sauces on the chickens and stuff and, and chicken breasts. And then we put them in the freezer. They are so good. And so it's like oh, wow. homemade food for the week. Cause I have to watch like fat and sodium and everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that, that was really good. But, um, but, but they, my cats, I tried to give them some of the chicken. It's super good. They won't eat it. Oh, wow. None of them. Yeah. My girls would not really eat people food either. Like I, like I said, occasionally they would have some ice cream if it, at the end of the bowl, but it was dependent on the flavor or I don't know their mood or something like that, but they really didn't like people food. And uh, yeah, they just wanted, they were very particular about which cat food they wanted too. So Lori, I have another question for you. So I yes. know we talked about like of being fine and how you do your group. Um, what are you working on? So you mentioned before that you're doing some traveling and have some cool projects. Like what's something you're super excited about in the world? Could be anything. Well, so first of all, my mission is to teach the world to be calm and grounded no matter what's going on around them. And I do that through my programs, teaching a lot on, on the concepts of gratitude and meditation and this whole idea of living a sabbatical life. which I developed after I took my month long sabbatical with Panther. And it's about really about not necessarily taking a month off to travel or a year off. It's about allowing yourself the space to recharge every day so that you don't get to the point of being stressed and burned out and overwhelmed that you can come back in the morning or whenever you choose the next day, fully recharged. And most people do not allow themselves to do that. I feel that. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited about that. And then also while I was on sabbatical, not working because I was burned out and stressed and overwhelmed. And that's why I took this sabbatical. So I wasn't working. This is when you get into the space of allowing ease and flow into your life and things start showing up. I was invited to become part of this business partnership where uh, I said yes. And this is the project that has me traveling now. And we are acquiring personal development businesses to put under kind of an under an umbrella, if you will, a roll up and uh, take advantage of economies of scale. Very cool. Yeah. I saw that on your LinkedIn. Um, That's really interesting. So exactly what kind of businesses are you looking for when you say personal development? Personal development is a, it's a wide range. So it could be uh, spirituality, health and wellness, nutrition, uh, manifestation, astrology, tarot cards, fairy dust, the whole gamut. Cat there. hair. Sorry, I had to go there. Cat hair. Yeah. <laughs> cat hair. It could be, it could be, uh, you know, things having to do with cats um, as far, but programs that could be considered evergreen. So courses, programs, digital assets, that kind of thing. Very that, cool. That don't require like me to be running it, for example. Like it wouldn't be a coaching thing. Okay. Well, well, if anybody's listening to this and you have a business like that, you might want to reach out to Lori then, right? I yeah. Mean- yeah. If, if you're ready to move on to your next adventure and you've got a business that you're just like, what, I, what am I going to do with it now? I guess I'll just shut it down. Because most personal development businesses are not sellable. There's not a market for them, but we're mm-hmm. kind of in a unique position right now to be able to acquire. Awesome. Wow. Well, thank that, you. Yeah. That, that, yeah. I really have never heard of that happening before. So yeah. Very it's cool. super interesting because I knew nothing about mergers and acquisitions before September. <laughs> and now it's I'm a very fascinated. fun, interesting world. I'm in it yeah. a lot. Yeah. 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 Great. So okay. I think that this has been a great episode, a lot of fun for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The more yeah. random in my book, the better. And this is right up there. I love that. So, Danielle, if I ever come to your house and have a bowl of ice cream, I guess I can expect a cat tongue at any time. Yeah, most likely like Loki's. And actually, that's how we learned that he doesn't really love the ice cream part. He likes the whipped cream. So we actually have a can of whipped cream in our fridge that's just his and he knows it's his. So if he sees it even get touched or looked at, he comes flying around the corner for it. Really? Yeah, it's the that's non, so we got him the non dairy, no sugar one, because at, at some point I'm like, we probably shouldn't go through a can a month for this cat here. It's probably not good for him. That's crazy. Have you ever had a cat that had like an interest in different textures? Hmm. Hmm. 
I haven't noticed that, but maybe I'll pay more attention now. Like I'm asking because Karma used to lick her the mesh on her cat bag oh. all the time because she likes, I think it was because of the texture. Thor, I can't have plastic anything left out anywhere. Oh, he'll get it. Even if yeah. it's in the garbage, he'll take it out and you'll hear him chomping somewhere. And more than once when I first got him, I called the vet panicking, thinking he ate it, but he didn't. Yeah, she used to do that too. Mm -hmm. But I never saw a cat that was licking, like licks the bag and, and, and emery boards. She loved those too. Oh, it's crazy. Weird. I know. Huh. It was a texture thing for her, I think. Well, anyway. if anybody listening has that, we'd like to hear. I thought yeah. that was kind of random. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today, Lori. Is there anything else you guys would like to add before we wrap up? How can people contact you? Yeah. My website is zenrabbit.com. And so that's where you can find me, find links to my socials. Everything is there on zenrabbit.com. And we were talking about sabbaticals. I have a download, the five easy ways to start living a sabbatical life is on that website. Very Ooh, cool. Look at that. Yeah. Well, thank you everybody. And we appreciate you listening. Make sure that you download us on your favorite podcast platform, leave a review, share with all your cat loving friends, and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for listening. Let's keep the conversation going. Give this podcast a rating so other cat lovers can find it. Connect with the Jersey Podcasts on social media or visit thejerseypodcasts.com and leave a message sharing a story or a question about cats. Thanks again for joining us and we'll catch you in the next episode.